Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the talk on zero knowledge proofs towards verifiable decentralized AI pipelines. I am Nitin and this is a joint work with my colleagues Pankaj and Vinayaka. The problem that we address here is providing practical zero knowledge protocols for machine learning relevant operations. At a very high level, this involves a generic commitment scheme for datasets and models, efficiently proving operations over committed datasets, and finally proving inference and accuracy claims over committed models and datasets. Our motivation here is to provide tools for verifiable decentralized AI pipeline, as we explain next. So what is a decentralized AI pipeline? Roughly, we mean that multiple actors are involved in creation of AI artifacts, such as datasets, models, predictions, etc. We will consider a simplified setting involving four types of participants. First, we have data owners. Uh, these are parties which are trusted sources of data. Then we have data curators. Uh, these are organizations which collate and process trusted datasets to produce curated datasets for specialized AI tasks, say for specific model training or benchmarking. Next, we have model owners who build and benchmark models using created datasets. And finally, we have model consumers who use provided models to obtain predictions. This is what a decentralized AI pipeline looks pictorially. The trusted data owners are in the extreme left, while the end consumers are on the extreme right. Completing the chain, we have data curators and model owners. The end consumers are generally interested in using deployed models to obtain predictions, or in a certifier role, interested in assessing a model for bias and fairness. What we additionally want is for this pipeline to be verifiable which means that the predictions or the fairness claims received by end consumers should be verifiable by them. At the same time, we want to preserve the confidentiality of the assets owned by data owners, data curators, and model owners. To achieve these seemingly contradictory goals, we have the asset owners make a public commitment of their assets on a decentralized ledger. Then we can leverage zero knowledge proofs to enable end consumers to verify the relationships between these assets using only their public commitments. As a specific example of such a pipeline, consider the gender fairness certification of a home mortgage approval model. The data owners in this case are banks which process mortgage applications. Data curators collate loan approval data from several banks and produce curated datasets of male and female applicants, respectively. The model owner proves that its model achieves a similar accuracy, which we call predictive parity, on both the datasets. As we can see that this pipeline can be described in terms of simple operations on data like aggregation, filtering, and scoring, which need to be verified over public commitments of these assets. With the preceding background and motivation, we come to our main technical contributions. First, we present uniform representation and commitment of datasets across different operations. What we mean here is that the same representation is used across different relations. Then we describe efficient circuits for verifying common operations such as concatenation, selection, ordering, joins, etc. Here, a single circuit for an operation supports all instances of size bounded by a system parameter M, and circuits scale linearly with M. Next, we present a significantly improved construction of inference and accuracy from decision trees, which was considered in a recent work. Finally, we describe a highly efficient scheme for read-only memory access in verifiable computation circuits. This scheme is crucially used in above improved construction of decision tree inference and accuracy. Before digging into our solution, we briefly survey some related work. More details about these can be found in the paper. 
data operations have been considered in the works on verifiable outsourced databases. However, these works consider each query to be encoded as a custom circuit. While our focus is on uniform representation of data and reusability of circuits across varied instance sizes. Similarly, there are several works now on verifiable inference from AI models such as decision trees and neural networks. Here we provide an improved construction for verifiable decision tree inference which was presented at CCS 2020. The literature on memory abstraction inside verifiable computation circuits is also rich. Some of the works addressing this primitive are Pantry, Buffet, XJSNARC. Here again, we discuss a construction for read-only memory with improved practical efficiency. Finally, we also acknowledge existing efforts to enable provenance of AI processes and provide tools to augment privacy to these provenance efforts. Here is an outline of rest of the talk. We will begin by describing our encoding of data sets inside arithmetic circuits. Next, we will discuss circuits to verify operations over encoded data sets. In the latter half, we will discuss encoding of decision trees inside arithmetic circuits, which also applies to random forests with minor modifications. Subsequently, we will discuss the verification of inference from a decision tree as an arithmetic circuit. We start by describing dataset encoding. Assume n to be a system parameter denoting the size of the largest dataset in terms of number of rows that we want to support. Then any dataset of size at most n is encoded by encoding each of its column vectors. So how do we encode a column vector? Each vector of size at most n is encoded uniformly as an n plus 1 sized vector, say s comma x1 to xn. Here the first coordinate denotes the size of the vector being encoded. The first s values x1 to xs denote the content of the vector being encoded while the remainder is padded with zeros. When we apply this encoding to each of the columns of the example dataset with four rows, we obtain the encoded dataset as shown. In summary, an encoded dataset has size content and padding illustrated in different colors here. Next, we describe commitment for datasets. We commit a dataset column wise. We use a homomorphic commitment, vector commitment scheme to commit to each column. The tuple of all column commitments is regarded as commitment for the dataset. Looking ahead, we will use a commitment scheme in conjunction with a commit and prove ZK snark so that we avoid computing these commitments inside circuits for verifying operations over committed datasets. Since columns are fewer, this commitment is succinct in practice. A further hash over the commitments may be used if more succinct commitments are desired. As we shall see later, column-wise commitment leads to substantial efficiency gains. Here we show examples of concatenation and selection operations over encoded datasets. Concatenation operation is specified by two datasets whose rows are concatenated to form the target dataset. A selection operation is specified by a source dataset, a target dataset, and a selector vector, that is, a filter, which specifies which rows of the source are included into the target dataset. The verification circuits for these operations must also check that size and padding is computed consistently. To illustrate key techniques, we look at the problem of verifying selection operation in more detail. Let A, B, C be columns of the source dataset, F be the selector vector, and X, Y, Z be columns of the target dataset. In the specific example, as shown, we should ensure that the two rows of the source dataset as selected by the selector vector should be the first two rows of the target dataset, followed by the padding. To aid the verification, we ask the prover to supply a binary vector sigma, which is a permutation of f with all the ones aligned at the start. The same permutation of the rows of the source dataset masked according to vector f 
yields the target data set as we illustrate on the next slide. Consider the column A circle F which is obtained by taking component wise product of A and F. The column A circle F is identical to column A wherever F is 1 and is zeroed out elsewhere. We refer to such a column A circle F as masked column A. Now we observe that the permutation that maps F to sigma also maps masked, masked columns A, B and C to columns X, Y and Z respectively. The correctness of the selection operation this reduces to showing a permutation that simultaneously maps F to sigma and masked columns A, B and C to X, Y and Z respectively. We now describe checking this simultaneous permutation property. Let us state the simultaneous permutation problem. Given the commitments to vectors u1 to un and v1 to vn, we want to show that there is a permutation pi that maps ui to vi for all i. We will accomplish this in two steps. First, we reduce the problem to showing that two vectors u and v are permutations of each other. Then we can probabilistically check that the product of the terms beta minus u1, beta minus u2 till beta minus un is equal to the product of the terms beta minus v1, beta minus v2 till beta minus vn for a randomly chosen beta. So the question is, what are the vectors u and v? It turns out that we can take u and v to be the same random linear combination of u1 to un and v1 to vn respectively. With overwhelming probability, it holds that if u is a permutation of v, ui is the same permutation of vi for all i. To link this back to the selection problem, we can take a random linear combination of columns of source and target data sets and show that the resulting source and target vectors satisfy the filter by f relationship. This is where column wise commitments and homomorphism of commitment scheme helps us to compress a verification over data sets to a verification over vectors. Similarly, we can express other data set operations such as row wise concatenation, order by, etc. in terms of simultaneous permutation property. We can use the verification for selection operation together with that for order by operation to verify correctness of inner join operation. This is what we will briefly sketch in the next few slides. Inner join operation involves concatenating rows of two datasets based on a common value for the joining columns. We illustrate the verification of inner join for datasets with two columns each, but more general case of greater than two columns reduces to this case by taking random linear combination of non-joining columns. We will assume that joining columns have distinct values and are sorted. Otherwise, we can use order by to sort the dat data sets first. The verification of inner join reduces to first correctly computing the size of the intersection, call it T. Prover providing two auxiliary binary vectors f and g containing t ones each, as in t exactly t entries in those vectors are one. The idea is that f represents the row selection that happens on the left dataset during the join, while g represents the row selection that happens on the right dataset during the join, with the two selections agreeing on the collapsed joining column. So this verification can be done using two instances of selection verification. The costliest step in the whole verification? That's the innocuous size of the intersection computation. It involves comparisons and hence the bit decomposition. Before moving on to the verifiable decision tree inference problem, we illustrate the practical efficiency of our dataset operations. Proving operations on datasets with 100,000 rows takes under a minute with the exception of inner join 
which takes up to 80 seconds on a modern laptop configuration. For implementation, we use commit and prove variant of Pinocchio ZK Snark, known as the adaptive Pinocchio scheme. But our methods should work with any commit and prove Snark with homomorphic vector commitment scheme. The good news is that most of the efficient ZK Snarks can be made commit and prove using such a commitment scheme. We also note that our proving time is largely independent of the number of columns. This is because we can often reduce the problem of verifying a property over data sets to that of verifying a property over vectors. Our verifiable decision tree inference relies on efficient read-only memory abstraction. So we state it first. In this, we are given three committed vectors, L, U, and V, where L denotes the read-only memory of size N, U denotes the positions of L that are accessed, we call U the access pattern, let's call U to be of size M, while V denotes the vector of values read from L for positions in U. That is, V of I is L accessed at U of I. To verify correct memory access, we construct four vectors of size M plus N. The vector X is obtained by appending the vector U to the vector 1 to N. Similarly, vector Y is obtained by concatenating vectors L and V. We interpret the first N entries in list X and Y as loading the entries of L against the memory locations 1 to N. That is, Li is loaded at location I. We interpret the final M entries as fetch operations. That is, the value Vi is fetched corresponding to location Ui. From literature on memory checking, we can verify that the fetch operations are consistent with the loading operations by simultaneously permuting the vectors x and y by the same permutation to obtain vectors x tilde and y tilde such that x tilde is in increasing order. Thereafter, we can check consistency of adjacent positions in x tilde and y tilde. That is, when two adjacent positions in x tilde are the same, the respective positions in y tilde are also same. To summarize, we need to check that x tilde is sorted. Note that we do not need comparisons as we know that the difference is the either 0 or 1 between successive positions. Secondly, we want to check that they are obtained via the same permutation of x and y, that is the simultaneous permutation property, and that x tilde and y tilde are consistent in adjacent positions. Each of these checks incur order n plus n gates in the arithmetic circuit, giving a total complexity of order m plus n for this check. We can also see here that our memory access construction compares favorably with prior construction for the case of read-only access. Amortized over a large number of accesses, we only pay about 5 gates per access. In the final part of this talk, we describe a construction for verifiable decision tree inference, which is the problem considered in a recent work of Zhang et al. presented at CCS 2020. We consider inference from a binary decision tree with parameters, n denoting the maximum number of nodes in the tree, d denoting the maximum dimensionality of feature vectors, h denoting the maximum height of the tree, small n denoting the size of the batch for inference, and W denoting the bit width of feature values, typically 32 bits. Given a commitment of the tree T, public samples x1 to xn and predictions y1 to yn, we want to prove that yi is equal to T of xi for each i. That is, tree T yields the prediction yi on feature vector xi. Our high level approach consists of representing decision tree as read-only memory, expressing inference on samples in terms of memory access, and then using efficient memory access construction discussed earlier. A decision tree is naturally expressed as a lookup table. Assume that the nodes of the tree are named 
successively starting from 1 with root, root assigned the node ID 1. For each node, there is a row in the lookup table containing the feature ID referenced by the node, the feature value used to decide the next child, the IDs of the left and right children, and the class label. For the case of internal nodes, the class label may be assigned arbitrarily. For the case of leaf nodes, the feature ID and threshold can be simply be set to 1. For leaf nodes, we additionally set left and right child IDs to the ID of the node itself. This ensures that when traver traversing the tree till a fixed depth, as we will do in a circuit, once we hit a leaf node, we stay on the same leaf node. The commitment for a decision tree represented in this way is simply the commitment of its columns, which we denote by F, T, L, R, and C respectively. The computation of a prediction for a sample is given in the blue box. We start with the root node, then at each node in the decision path, we look up the feature ID and the threshold used in comparison. The values of the left and right children and compute the next node to be the one of left or right child based on the comparison. For the final node, we also look up the corresponding class label. So how do we verify that above algorithm is run correctly by the prover? As usual, we let prover supply all the values involved in the computation. That is for each step of traversal, the prover supplies the node ID, feature ID, the threshold, the feature value, the IDs of the left and right children, etc. The correctness of the entire computation reduces to correctness of lookup relations in the green box on the top right and the correctness of comparisons in the green box below it. Now we simply need to do an aggregate verification across all samples. Aggregate verification over all samples amounts to H into N lookups on lists, F, T, L, R, each of size at most capital N. These can be reduced to verification over one combined list, as the access pattern uh, here is the same, which is P. Secondly, we have H N lookups over data D, viewed as a list of size D N. And finally, we have H N comparisons of W bit numbers. Leveraging the memory access protocol, our overall circuit complexity is conservatively 5 times capital N plus small n into 10H plus 5D plus W, which vastly improves prior work as we discuss next. The table compares the circuit complexity incurred by our approach with that of Zhang, etc. all across three major parts of verification. That is, the consistency of input tree with its public commitment, the consistency of feature vector and decision path, and the correctness of path traversal. With regard to establishing consistency with tree commitment, we incur no gates in the circuit as we avoid computing commitment in the circuit, leveraging commit and prove snarks. There is some overhead in, the, in computing the proof for the prover, but it's typically less than 5%. We also incur fewer gates for the second step using the efficient memory access construction. Both the approaches e incur an equal number of comparisons and tend to perform similar once comparisons dominate the computation. We also tabulate the circuit complexity incurred by each method for a specific setting of the parameters as shown. Even at 1000 samples, our approach is around 4.5 times more efficient for moderately sized decision tree. Finally, we measure the practical performance of our verifiable decision tree inference. We choose a moderately sized decision tree with 1000 nodes, 50 features and depth 20. The proving time is tabulated for proving inference on batches of 100, 1000 and 10,000 nodes respectively. Our proving times take from few seconds for small batches to few minutes on large batches. The verification is typically subsequent as we use pre-processed circuits for the computation. To conclude, we introduced uniform encoding of datasets in circuits for verifiable computation, which makes several common operations extremely efficient. 
Our dataset modeling can be combined with existing efforts on verifiable inference from models to yield end-to-end -end verification of simple AI pipelines. We also presented improved constructions of verifiable read-only memory and decision tree inference that may be of independent interest. With that, I would like to thank you and have a very good day.